Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be reacting to the scariest day in NFL history. I don't know what it's about, but we're about to find out. Please don't forget to leave a like if you enjoy the content, comment on what you want to see next, and subscribe for more content. Let's get into it. Do you remember standing up after you make that tackle? News tonight on Buffalo Bills player Damar Hamlin, who millions watched collapse during Monday Night Football. That's something I don't really want to get too deep into in the details of. January 2nd, 2023, two of the NFL's best teams squaring off with much more at stake than just primetime coverage. The Buffalo Bills against the Cincinnati Bengals. The outcome of this game will alter the entire playoff landscape and pass to Super Bowl 57. What's at stake? The number one seed in the AFC. The only team to receive a first round bye and hold home field advantage for the entire postseason. And it won't be easy as both teams haven't lost in nearly two months. They've met each other at the perfect time, week 17 on Monday night. Right away, it looks like the shootout everyone was hoping for. The Bengals attack first, trucking down the field in less than three minutes for a Tyler Boyd touchdown. But Buffalo quickly responds with a 25-yard field goal from Tyler Bass. The energy in the stadium is so intense, you can't even hear yourself think. Then it happens. The scariest moment in NFL history. With just over six minutes left in the first quarter, the Bengals have the ball. On the second play of the drive, Joe Burrow passes to T. Higgins and lowers his shoulder, hoping to gain a few extra yards. DeMar Hamlin makes the tackle, and as you can see, everything appears normal. Mm -hmm. Hamlin returns to his feet, adjusts his helmet, then collapses on the spot. And now another Bills player is down. Whistles are blown and gameplay is immediately stopped. Within 10 seconds of this moment, athletic trainers and medical professionals swarm the field. Emergency CPR is conducted for 10 minutes as an ambulance arrives mm -hmm. soon after. DeMar is down on the field for nearly 20 minutes. Both wow. teams surround him in shock while his family runs down to the field to be by his side. The stadium that was uncontrollably loud just moments ago is now completely silent. Wow. Damar receives oxygen from the first responders, is loaded into the ambulance with his mother, and transported directly to the University of Cincinnati Medical Center, four miles away. The ambulance leaves the stadium at exactly 9.25 p.m., 30 minutes after he initially collapsed on the field. Damn. You see a cluttered TV broadcast then hear this from Joe Buck. They've been given five minutes to quote unquote, get ready to go back to playing. That's the word we get from the league and the word we get from down on the field, but nobody's moving. As you can see, teammates remain seated, hug each other. What the heck? It's like the guy just collapsed. 30 minutes later, nobody knows what's going on and they are giving just five minutes to go back to the game. That's crazy, man. And shed tears for their teammate whose status now remains up in the air. During all of this, both head coaches had been discussing with officials, leading to the decision by Buffalo head coach Sean McDermott to pull his team off the field and back to the locker room. Another 30 minutes pass, and the game is officially postponed, over an hour after DeMar collapsed. Meanwhile, his status remains unknown, as the world waits for what feels like an eternity for an update. Stefan Diggs, other teammates, and Bengals head coach Zach Taylor go to visit DeMar at the medical center. But on Diggs' way in, he stopped by an officer, nearly having to force his way in, stating, we just had to be here for our teammate. And just outside, an additional 100 fans Damn. stand hand in hand wow. in support. Then, finally, there is an announcement on Damar's status. He had a heart attack on the field. Damar was able to regain his heartbeat, but still remains in critical condition. But in the night following the incident, something magical happens. Damar's charity and toy drive, the Chasing M's Foundation, receives an unthinkable amount of donations. Before the Monday night game... So, did they just stop the game right away? Nobody went back to the game and everybody just left the stadium? What was the outcome of the game? Did they have to play it again or what was the outcome? His foundation had $74,000 in donations. The very next morning, with the help of over 119,000 new donors, that number had reached over $3 million, and that wow. amount has skyrocketed to over $9 million and counting. But amongst this amazing moment, nearly three days pass without any major updates on DeMar's health. Then, on January 5th, not only does the NFL officially cancel the Bills-Bengal game, 
but the world receives information about Damar directly from the UC Medical Center. His neurological function is completely intact. He is able to breathe with a breathing tube, okay. he can physically hold hands with his family, and he's even able to communicate with writing. The first question he wrote was, did we win? And the medical staff responded with, you won. You won the game of life. Oh. But it gets even better. The next day brings another significant update and three powerful words from Damar himself. His breathing tube is removed as he is able to breathe completely on his own. His neurologic function remains intact and he is able to talk to I just have one question. How big of a player is he in the NFL? Because they were able to raise $9 million and from thousands of thousands of people. Is it just because he's a big star or is it just how solidarity works within the NFL? It's like they support each other, even if you're not a fan of his team, he's still an, an, an NFL player. So you go and donate and support. Talk to his family. Damar is even able to say his first words to his teammates in over four days. In a FaceTime call, he tells them simply, love you boys. And the next day brings the NFL's first game action since the incident. Love is shown in incomparable ways. Every single team in the league shows support during warmups by wearing Love for Damar shirts. But nothing is quite as special as what the Buffalo Bills had in store. At home, in the final game of the regular season, Buffalo players walk through the tunnel repping Damar's number three, Damar Hamlin shirts and hats. The Bills run out into Highmark Stadium to a packed out crowd full of supportive fans. Multiple players carry love for Damar flags. The entire team graces number three patches, and the medical team that responded to Damar's collapse is honored right before kickoff. But how the actual game started is even more unreal. The New England Patriots win the coin toss but defer, so the Bills will receive the opening kickoff. What unfolds next is something out of a movie. Let's listen in. New England decided to defer after winning the toss. And here's Hines on the run back, breaking a tackle and taking it past midfield. And down the sideline he goes. This is storybook. An opening kickoff return for Tamar Hamlin. And oh. this place is absolutely going wild. But that's not even the most unforgettable moment of it all. The best part? Damar watched all of this unfold live on TV while he was at the hospital. And when Hines ran this opening touchdown, Damar celebrated a lot. Did they just let them have the touchdown or was it something that they earned? I'm saying like the other team, did they let them have the touchdown just in, to be in support of what is happening to the club and their player? Or was it something that they did they really like, they, did they earn the touchdown? A lot. According to the UC medical staff, he got out of his chair, jumped up and down, and nearly set off every alarm in the ICU. A truly touching moment. That energy remained the entire game, becoming a very special day for not just the players and fans, but also the most important people involved in this incident. The Bills brought home the victory 35-23. They FaceTimed Damar just minutes following the win, and then came the gifting of the game ball. A game ball was handed out not only to Damar, but also to the man who saved his life less than one week ago. Danny Kellington, the Bills' assistant athletic trainer who performed emergency CPR that Monday night. He was part of the essential medical team that was able to bring immediate response to save Damar's life and neurological function. Without them, Damar would not have made it off the field alive. And just one day after this emotional regular season closer, Damar was able to return to Buffalo due to remarkable improvements in his condition. On January 9th, exactly one week after the event, Damar was discharged from the UC Medical Center and moved to the Buffalo General Medical Center. His condition had been updated from critical to good, and he was mm. able to walk and do physical therapy. But he didn't stay there long. While at Buffalo General, they conducted cardiac, vascular, and neurological tests, and in just one day, Damar was able to go home. From this point forward, he was given permission to rehab away from the hospital and with family and his teammates. And just one day before Buffalo's playoff opener against Miami, he was able to visit teammates, appearing to be in very high spirits. A major emotional boost for a team that had just witnessed this tragedy. He attended Buffalo's divisional matchup with Cincinnati one week later and made his first public speech since the incident a couple days later. I can't tell you how appreciative 
I am with all the love, all the support, and everything that's just been coming in my way. And social media is a huge reason why family, friends, and fans were able to keep up with Damar's status and continue their ongoing support, from updates on his personal Twitter and Instagram to fan-made videos and love from major figures outside of the NFL. Support came from everywhere you could possibly imagine. Damar's strength and appreciation for others has been on clear display throughout this entire process. He thanked all the medical staff who assisted him, created merchandise with all the proceeds going to the University of Cincinnati <laughs> Trauma Center, and even texted his teammate Tredavious White in the middle of the night to apologize for putting his team through everything that occurred since his accident. Since that Monday night football game on January 2nd, 2023, the world has had the opportunity to witness the scariest day in NFL history evolve into one of the biggest outpourings of love and support, not only for Damar Hamlin, but also the medical team that saved his life. Yep. That was such a great video. I've enjoyed this video. I've literally never seen anything like this before. And in January 2023, I was here, but I've never heard about this, not in the news or anything. But again, I don't follow the NFL, so it makes sense that I've never heard about it. But yeah, that was so good. That was good. That was that was amazing. Like the love of the, the fans, the entire NFL, his teammates and everything. That was such a great story. How are they doing right now, his team? Did they win the, did, were they able to go to the, how is it called again? The Super Bowl. Is the Super Bowl just one game, the final, or is it a whole tournament? I'm not sure, but yeah. Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time.